All right, uh, welcome to uh, Kelsey Taylor and my uh, session on designing Mapbox maps with accessibility in mind. Um, just to give a bit more background about what Kelsey and I do at Mapbox, we are both on the map design team uh, where we're focused on iconography, uh, Mapbox Studio and the components that go into Mapbox Studio, um, working with customers and custom base maps and also helping with training. Uh, so today we're going to cover a number of different projects, Hack Week projects that have uh, focused on different aspects of accessibility. Um, they go from uh, color accessibility or color blindness, um, uh, overall ease of use and legibility, uh, and we sort of touch on different components of Mapbox like Studio and GLJS. And uh, I'll pass it over to Kelsey. Um, yeah, so the first project I want to talk about are called Accessible Components. Accessible Components are a set of WCAG compliant style components that adhere to AA web design accessibility guidelines. If you aren't familiar with the concept, style components are an abstraction of map layers and properties that allow you to quickly style many parts of the map together. I started building out accessible components as part of a hack week held by our team at Mapbox back in May. While this project's still a work in progress, I'd like to show you a few features that accessible components include. By default, all fonts start at 14 points, which is the minimum acceptable size for AA compliance. Color is one of the most challenging parts of the accessibility requirements to meet for maps. So we incorporated patterns into our styles to help differentiate features that may otherwise look pretty similar uh, to one another when colors can be hard for people to distinguish. Our Maki icon library at Mapbox contains dozens of carefully drawn SVG icons, now exclusively on a 15 by 15 pixel canvas. Depending on the use case, accessible components allow you to scale up these icons in studio for each component for improved legibility. Another project that we have are our, color, are our data viz components that include colorblind friendly palettes. Any cartographer who makes data visualizations knows the handful of existing color palettes used across our discipline. With the release of data viz components earlier this year, see, there we go. Uh, we wanted to build a collection of color palettes that were aesthetically pleasing, appropriate for data visualization, and all tested for colorblind friendliness. Each of the palettes seen here are built into Mapbox Studio, so you can create a core plot heat map or data-driven circles visualization, then switch between the palettes to find the perfect fit for your data story. Also in Mapbox Studio, any designer can preview how their map looks to users with different types of colorblindness using the colorblindness simulator. The eight options available are ordered from most common to most rare. Use in conjunction with the patterns, as you see here in this example, or the colorblind friendly palettes just mentioned in data viz components. Mapbox Studio provides powerful tooling to ensure your maps are both beautiful and legible for all you share them with. Now, Will is going to talk about some recent accessibility improvements in Mapbox GL. Hey, uh, yeah, so uh, what you're seeing here is a, a screenshot of. Robert Lender's uh, WCAG's um, evaluation of different web mapping platforms. Uh, it's this amazing guide and um, a great set of principles or uh, ways to evaluate the accessibility of, of these different platforms. Uh, I know this has um, been uh, something that Mapbox GL has, has also pointed to as something to um, you know hold hold a standard. Uh, and as GLJS continues to improve, I know they've recently added uh, a new milestone to, to sort of make it even more accessible. I think generally it was pretty highly ranked uh, in terms of accessibility, but just some overall improvements like uh, making sure that the right labels are there for, for screen readers related to, to buttons and making sure the attribution container, for example, is, is properly labeled. Uh, there is also this 
really cool plugin created uh, by our colleague Tristan. Um, and what it allows you to do is when you uh, use uh, GLJS, you're able to call this plugin, you're able to choose a property and a number of layers in your, in your Mapbox style. Um, and then they're able to actually uh, tab through the POIs and, and get rid, uh, get, uh, get these properties right out to you in a screen reader. Um, and we have an example on the next slide. We know HTTP University of Toronto button, Toronto Union Station button, Dundas button. So that's still very much a, a work in progress, but um, something that uh, is being developed and is you know just trying to improve uh, GLJS's overall accessibility. We know HTTP University of Toronto button. Toronto Union Station button, Dundas button. And there you go again. <laughs> um, so for, for my Hack Week project, uh, I focused on this uh, idea called Map Reader, and uh, it is a dynamic text description of Mapbox maps for screen readers. Um, and this idea sort of came to me from my background in journalism, uh, where I had been exposed to how screen readers would fail, especially on interactive charts and graphics. Um, uh, so I started, think, started thinking abstractly about what an interactive map could be and how it could just be uh, a text description. And you can see here on the right, um, in the actual code, I have all these settings applied to sort of what type of map you would use, um, some levels of description you can include that would be pretty static. Um, and yeah, this is this is that project. Uh, it, it it uses a number of different Mapbox components. Uh, it uses GLJS uh, v2 for using pitch, bearing, and camera view to describe you know what what sort of view you have if you're pointing north, if it's pitched or not. Um, I use the get container to actually target the can target the canvas element um, to actually give it like an area label. Uh, uses the reverse geocoding to um, uh, describe what sort of region you're looking at. Uh, and then it also uses these like zoom level descriptions. So if you're at zoom level three, it is, you're gonna see a continent and down to higher zoom levels, which are, you know, you're looking at a building. Uh, so this is an example of how it would work on a locator map. Heading level one, article title. Laura Ipsum Dolor Sedamet, a locator map of New York, United States. The map is zoomed to show large islands. The map, map, region. You are currently on a region. To interact with items in this group, press control, option, shift, down arrow. A locator map of Navy Yard, New York, New York, 11205, United States. The map is zoomed to show large rows. The map does not point north. It is pitched. A locator map of Prospect Park, New York, New York, 11225, United States. The map is zoomed to show large roads. The map does not point north. It is pitched. A locator map of 200 Wellhouse Drive, Brooklyn, New York, 11225, United States. The map is zoomed to show buildings. The map does not point north. It is pitched. Uh, so yeah, that, this could be used, you know, as a, within a, uh, a locator map tool uh, for a news organization to sort of dynamically generate these descriptions of the map below. And you can see how you could adapt to zooming and banning around as well. Uh, and this uses an example with data visualization. So like Kelsey uh, spoke to before, there's uh, data visualization components in Studio. So this would target that component itself and then um, read that layer and describe it as best possible. Heading level one, article title, Norm Ipsum Dolor Sedamet, consecutor of the projected population of New York City boroughs in 2040 over New York, New York, United States. The highest value in view is 2,840,525 and the lowest is 501,109. The map is zoomed to show large rivers. Group. Heading level one. And then this was sort of the last idea. Um, 
it was using a GLJS example of touring around New York. Um, so this sort of integrates a UI, a button, um, and shows you how you can tour around and how they sort of combine as one. Heading level one, article title, Laura Live Some Dollar Sedanet, Progress Through Map Locations button. You are currently on a button inside of web content. To click this button, press control, option, space. To exit this web area, press control, option, shift, up arrow. Step one of six. Currently showing Bronx, New York, United States. The map is zoomed to show large roads. It is pitched. Step two of six. Currently showing Brooklyn, New York, United States. The map is zoomed to show large roads. Heading level one. You pretty much get it. Um, so yeah, still lots of work to be done. Um, and thank you for coming to our talk.